Hi and welcome to my new video. Today I would like to present different Kubernetes concepts that you can use in Apache Spark. So in the demo, I will use this Docker file, which extends the data mechanics uh, image, which is quite convenient way to define Docker images in Apache Spark because you have you can only use something which is already available. You don't need to build the, the Docker image from scratch by compiling Apache Spark code source and so on and so forth. So as you can see, I'm extending this Spark 3.1 image and I'm also creating some directory changing the work there because I will copy to this very specific to this place I will copy my uh, my jar and in my jar I will use I will currently use two different applications so I will use this one which is the same application that I used in the stage level scheduling demo one or a few weeks ago so I have uh, my spark RDD abstraction that uses different resources and I will use this code to show you how Apache Spark interacts with Kubernetes and how it updates the snapshot store. The second application is a sample static application with count of an in-memory data frame and I will use it for other purposes, namely to demonstrate the persistent volumes. So let me check the, the schedule and the plan of the presentation. So to start the demo I will uh, start a mini cube that will simulate the the Kubernetes cluster on my local machine and once it started I will need to start another component of the uh, mini cube which is the mini cube dashboard okay it's currently bootstrapping that's good and I will start the mini cube dashboard okay so it's still starting and meantime I will prepare in my application so I will run the maven clean install command that will simply build and create the package and once it's done let, I will show you the Kubernetes dashboard because it's already started okay the Kubernetes dashboard is there so let's take a look at it so we have the dashboard some namespaces Okay, I have one nice space I already created for the demo purposes. Cool. And what happens next? So next I will prepare my uh, my application to be deployed on Kubernetes. So to start, I will uh, sorry, I will build the Docker image. Okay, and now I will save this Docker image to Antar archive and I will later load it to Minikube so that I can use it directly from, from the cluster. Of course, in the real world, you, will, you would rather use something like container registry instead of this sample Minikube image load command that I will execute later, so just, just now. And when it's done, I will check whether the image was correctly uploaded to loaded to to my local Kubernetes cluster. So Minikube LS list and do I have something like Kubernetes conceives demo? Yes. Okay, so I can continue. Now I have to run some commands to create the name namespace, but as you saw the namespace already exists. So I will set the current context. And first I will create a service account Spark Reader role, but as you can see it already exists. So maybe I will try to remove this service account. Okay, and now I will recreate it so that you can see what happens. So Spark Reader is a read-only role and as you can see it's, it, ha it has only a view permission and that's it's there to illustrate what happens when you try to deploy an Apache Spark using a read-only service account. So we will see that just afterwards. Okay, role binding already 
exist or I mean maybe remove it first okay and I will recreate it and now I will go to my local Apache Spark directory and now I will also get the Kubernetes master address and export it to a variable and first uh, and now I will run a, a command to to start the job and I maybe forgot to add something no that's okay so I will start the job on my Kubernetes cluster and and you can see now what what will happen with the driver so as you can see the driver is running and it failed just afterwards because if you check the logs you will see that the service account cannot issue any write actions write action expressed in the post http uh, method so let's go back to to the namespace so normally this uh, this uh, this pod will never start so i will just i will just delete it and now i will create a spark editor role but first i will also delete it and i will do the same for the for the role binding so I will start by deleting it first and now I will do it right that way and as you can see unlike the previous uh, Spark Reader here we have the edit permission so it means that the driver will be able to create the executor pod so let's just check it okay and I will maybe sorry we maybe add I will maybe add a command an option to keep the to keep the driver pod after it terminates so let me find it quickly uh, yes that's that's this one so delay on termination set to false and i will start my my job and as you can see this time i'm using the spark editor role so logically this time everything should be fine and as you can see it's happening because the driver is still running and it's able to create new executors and at the same time I will try to stream the driver logs just to show you the interaction with the with uh, with the uh, snapshot store so the Apache Spark representation of the Kubernetes pods associated to to the job so i will i have this i change the namespace and now i will print the logs of the driver so the driver name is here and i will look for something like snapshot so to start let's check so let's check first this snapshot store so the snapshot store as i said before is a kind of representation of job resources on kubernetes uh, cluster and here you can see that we got some actions from the watcher and from the which are kind of related to the pod, pod allocator that expects to increment the number or decrement the number of pod executors so here you can see that the listener intercepted this action and intercepted the state of this uh, of the of the pod and it also happens for other executors that are related to uh, to the to the resource profile so as you can see the, we have a resource profile that changed that will require some extra executors and now we have 
Kubernetes part that listens for the executor pod allocate on actions and in intercepts them and in it updates the local state of the snapshot state snapshot store and you will see that uh, later uh, maybe not here yes you can also see that we perform from time to time some full synchronization of the state in the snapshot in the, in the snapshot store so do we have something else no okay so that's that's all for this part let me stop the execute the driver and now i will do this i will do the second part so i will create a persistent volume so to create the persistent volume i have to connect to my ss minikube ssr and i will create a directory maybe with some sample sample file and now i will create the persistent volume pointing to to this uh, location okay so that's my bad i'm not in the good directory okay and maybe before executing this command i will show you the persistent volume definition so as you can see i'm defining two volumes because i will have i will have two executors using them here it's only for the demo purposes i predefined two different volumes but obviously you should try to automate this process so that you this part can become much more flexible so i have two volumes with manual storage class so that's quite important because before getting this demo ready i was a bit stuck with this part because i defined a bit, uh, bad storage class and because of that apache spark on kubernetes couldn't match the uh, the storage class name from my spark submit command to the storage class names that were available on kubernetes cluster so take care of that and also i think that if you use too small volume it will not be able to small volume regarding your expectations from spark submit command uh, kubernetes will not be able to provide you this persistent volume even though it's existing and not used so there are these two things to keep in mind the class and the size that should be at least as big as the required size in spark submit command so that was for the spark uh, for the persistent volumes now as you can see i created both of them they are both available and now i will run my spark submit command and as you can see here i'm pointing these uh, mounts to this temporary location i have the on demand claim of manual storage that's something i said before and the size limit is exactly the limit of my image and unlike previously i run here this static app meaning that i will only uh, request for two executors every time so i have my first executors requested and they are up and running and as you can see that i have the persistent volumes associated to to each of them and we can also maybe check the logs of the driver to and try to find something mentioning the the volumes here so maybe let's try it that way yes you can see that so that's the internal part of in the, the part of the internal communication between apache spark on kubernetes and kubernetes cluster you can see that the pod allocator in addition to the ability to allocate executors to allocate the pods to the executors it can also request some extra items like for example the persistent volume so here you can see that i'm the it communicates with the cluster via this uh, restful api it sends the request with uh, with the owner 
and also the specification for the persistent volume that should correspond to the claim. And later we can observe also the response of the cluster saying that everything is okay and normally this request should be fulfilled very soon with the allocated executor pod. So that's all for this demo. It's a kind of quick summary of the blog post I have I wrote about this this topic, this Kubernetes concept on Apache Spark. And if you are, if you are interested in it, if you want to discover more uh, about the internals and also other concepts, I invite you to the article which is linked in the description of this video. It was Bartosz Konieczny from waitingforcode.com. Thanks for watching.